By that point, I had hundreds and hundreds of songs on my hard drive. But I didn't want to do a bunch of songs and raps thrown together. I wanted it to be a cohesive project from start to finish. A real thing that I could put a cover on and press into CDs that would live forever. That way I could perform at open mics and say, Yo, I just dropped this mixtape and here's where y'all can download it. Rather than, Yo, you ain't never heard of me before, but here's some raps I did over an Outkast beat. It would be more legitimate, more professional, more real. It needed to have an identity too. And that identity was logic. Rappers create alter ego MCs for the same reason kids love superheroes. You get to be something more magnificent and powerful than yourself. Bruce Wayne is Bruce Wayne. That's just Christian Bale in a fancy suit. But Batman is fucking Batman. He gets to wear dope body armor and kick the Joker's ass. What Logic and Hitman and Lord Subliminal and all the other aliases I'd come up with had in common was that they were a way to be something I wasn't. Something I wanted to be and wished I could be. When I got on the mic, I could escape myself and my reality by playing this character. I could live in another universe. I could rap about having millions of dollars when all I had was dozens of food stamps. I could rap about chilling in Cabo when really I never left Mary Jo's guest room. In that room, I set up my monitor and my laptop and my microphone on Mary Jo's spare desk. Right under me, in the space where your legs are supposed to go, was where she kept her cat's litter box. It was one of those giant kitty litter houses, and she would not let me move it. She was always like, You do not move the litter box. That's where the cats go. So I always had my legs spread eagle around it with the wafting of shit in my nostrils as I was recording, Yeah, I'm the motherfucking man! And I'm rapping about being the shit sitting next to the shit. <laughs> 